Hello everybody. Again, this is Dr. Sergei Sarkasov, and uh, today I want to look to, into a very interesting mathematics problem, actually proposed uh, to some Russian uh, talented mathematics students and, uh, and other mathematicians by Russia's Prime Minister, Mikhail Mishustin. So, let's see what, what this problem is all about. Actually, it's very simple as far as how it's given. So, all you're given is uh, um, basically a circle given, okay? Circle, okay, you're given a diameter on the circle, some diameter is drawn. So, let's say diameter uh, RS, it's called those points of intersection with diameter and circle R and S, and a point and point, uh, call it P, some arbitrary point, not on the diameter, okay? on the circle. So, what you're trying to do, prove, of course, with it, is uh, construct what? Perpendicular, okay, perpendicular line to the diameter RS, okay, going through the point P. So from P, we want to draw a basically a perpendicular, right, to RS. And how do we uh, manage to do that? How do we find that point there, okay, that makes this a perpendicular and a 90 degree angle, right? Okay, so let us continue. Let me go ahead and make a circle here, a bigger circle actually here I did, where the points P, R, and S, okay? And so let's see, let's go ahead and let's go from here. Um, let me go ahead and make it a little more visible, so a little smaller here. Okay. Now, here's the way I'm going to do this. And again, this is my solution. I haven't really looked at anything outside of my solution, but I think every, it's going to be very similar. I know some people have already solved it um, around uh, some of the colleagues I have and know. Here goes. So let's go ahead and what can we do with it? Oh, by the way, very big. Only straight edge allowed. Okay, so allowed only. Okay, straight edge. Not even a ruler to measure. Okay, but a straight edge to draw straight lines through points. So in other words, you can't use a compass, for example. Otherwise, it'll be a lot easier. Okay, only straight edge. So here goes. With a straight edge, we can take uh, construct a line or array or write a line segment through the points PR, R and P. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me actually get a little neat since I can do that here. With, let's get a shape going, uh, of a line going through um, R and P. So there we go. Somewhere it extends that way. Okay. And then, okay, let's go ahead and do similarly, but before anything, this is the kind of the trick. A big trick to this, and you have to have some confidence as a mathematician coming into this, that what you're doing is going to bring in some insight. Again, we're not sure about this at the point, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, look, let me make up some point, you know, PRS, so let's call it T, some random point right here between the, R, the points P and S on the arc PS okay, of the circle. Here we are, some point, call it T. And let's see what happens. So let's go ahead and draw a shape. Let me actually change this a little bit to make it red. Okay, so now let's go ahead and draw the shape here through S and T. Okay, draw a line through S and T. And it will intersect, of course, uh, somewhere uh, the, the line RP or the ray RP, right? And so let's call this point of intersection. Maybe, you know, hopefully that will help us with something. Call this point of intersection. Uh, what's the next letter? P R S T U, right? Okay, T U. And then we can do several things. I would say first let's get, let's connect uh, the points inside. Again, with the straight edge, we can connect points. There's not much more we can do. And so the limitation of what we can do can kind of help us with uh, with uh, doing this. Now, one thing I want to mention is, look, if I connect R T, okay, let's do this for example. I'll make a little ray R T. Um, what 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 I can see right away is you see that angle R T S. So I'm gonna instead of writing measure of R T S, I'm just gonna write angle R T S. Okay.
Okay, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna avoid this little M to make it all faster. That angle measure is actually 90 degrees, and why is that? Since okay, um, arc RS right outside of that. So in other words, since it subtends what a 180 degree arc, right? The basically the half the circle. That's one way to look at it. Or of course, if on the diameter, another you know always if you have a triangle such as RTS, that angle will be 90 degrees. Um, and that's again because you see this. RS, this arc on this side, the measure of that arc is 180 degrees, right, from the R and the S, and so this will be half this angle, will be half of the arc, it's a tense, so it's going to be 90 degrees, so circles work. And of course, there's a sum inside into that as well, you could have initially done that. So since so it subtends 180 degree um, arc uh, RS, right, which is half the circle. Similarly, and so let's draw a line um, from S to P through through S and P as let's say you know array basically like that and um, note that this is also a right angle right it's also a right angle and so we will have similarly and so we have RPS RPS the angle is also 90 degrees same same argument okay very much the same argument and therefore, what do we have? We have that for the triangle, okay, there's a triangle in triangle RSU, okay, so I'm going to go kind of with the proof as, as I'm constructing, okay, so in triangle RSU, what do we have? What is RT? What are RT and SP? RT and SP right are altitudes of this triangle okay because 90 degrees right for both of those as far as they're you know they're they're chevians that are going uh making those angles um through those angles but also in the triangle and they're you know perpendicular to the the basis from the vert vertices so our altitudes okay and so what does that further lead to well let me construct here it goes. This is kind of a big, uh, big thing here. Let's go ahead and get a little shape, a line from U, okay, through that point of intersection. We're going to call that something. Let's maybe U V, but let's let's make it like that, okay. So there's a uh, something that goes through that point. In other words, right over here, okay. Let's see. Right here, you have this point. Call it. Uh, UV then right and then maybe these points also will be called something maybe this is the point W here okay we're in our section W and we don't really need this point it will turn out okay. so let's look into this for a moment what what I was going to tell you is that you see this UV right here this blue um, uh, Chevy and in the triangle, uh, in the RSU triangle, guess what? Therefore, because since, okay, since altitudes in any, especially acute triangle, you can see it inside, in any um, altitudes in any triangle, let me just write the word triangle, in triangle, are concurrent, okay, this is interesting proof in itself, okay? Not so bad. Since they are concurrent, we must have must have that other um, Chevian that goes through the this intersection point. In other words, they see this U V right, uh, U W U V and U or U W. That is also an altitude of that triangle. Must have U W. Perpendicular to the diameter, basically the base of that triangle, that moment RS. That's that's a pretty big uh, result there. You'll see how that's important. Now, here's here's more of what we can do. All right. So let's continue with let's 
here's a big thing and then let's do this. So let's draw this uh, next line segment or continuation of uh, the segment T W. Let's continue through W from T and go here. And then we're interested, where does this intersect the circle also? So let's say I have this and we are trying to make it neat here. There we go. So it's a, it's a, it's a segment uh, continued, uh, so it's a ray from T to W and on and on. And so this point, okay, let's call it uh, point, point X, okay? Let's call that point X. And let's see what is, what is so interesting about this point X. And there's something very interesting. In fact, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, draw, okay, extend something from, basically connect the points P and X. PX. I'm interested in this PX. It looks like something I'm very interested in. Remember what we're trying to do? So if you can remember what we're trying to do, we're trying to draw something from P going down and perpendicular to this RS, this diameter. So let's see if this um, will, will help us in any fashion or form. Here goes. You see this, um, and I'm not going to write all the steps. I'm going to talk about it a little bit more. So you see this, let's say, this right here, this quadrilateral. Let's see if this is one way that would be kind of helpful to do this. So the quadrilateral, what is that? Uh, STVW, right? Now this is also a right angle, by the way. Remember that's an altitude. And so if this is a right angle and this will be then a right angle, right? Then that quadrilateral is cyclic, okay? What does it mean cyclic? It means it actually can be uh, circumscribed by a circle like that, okay? okay? Because the opposite angles add up to 180 degrees. That's that's something that can be useful, okay? Let's see what else will be interesting. Well, that's that's going to be very big because watch this. So also since let me make it right in red here. So since, okay, uh, we have uh, angles V, W, S, angles V, W, S, equal 90 degrees, equals 90 degrees, equals that another angle that's 90 is that one V, T, S, right, or S, T, V, S, T, V, then the quadrilateral, quadrilateral, what was it, uh, uh, S, T, V, W, S T V W right is cyclic, okay? So it can be circumscribed by a circle. And what's interesting is you see this here, this angle V W T right here, and this angle uh, V S T, they're going to be of the same measure because they both will subtend this arc V T. Okay, when you know when you circumscribe with a circle, so that's important, right? At least it looks like it's a T V W T W V and T S V are the same in measure. Uh, let's see, T what is it? T S V and T W V. So T S V. Is equal to measure TWV, okay, as they both subtend, okay, arc what? Arc VT, if, if they're circumscribed by a circle. So TV arc, okay, let me make it a little, okay, that's, that's a big, uh, big interesting fact because let me show you another thing. You see, this uh, T, um, TSV, or what do we call it, VT, VST, also angle this one, at TSV, right, let's see, TSV, also angle TSV is basically, of course, right, the measure equal to what? The same angle T, so TSV is basically T, oops, is uh, TSP, right, extend V to P, so 
this is this angle right there. Just go through P this time. So call it TSP, just renaming the angle basically. TSP. And equals to what? This other angle that subtends, you see, because uh, TSP right here subtends arc what? PT. Okay, this right here, this arc PT. In that big circle, the one we're given. And also, what other, what other, what other angle subtends it? PXT. So this angle will be the same as this angle and the same as that one turns out. Right? So let me see. PXT. Angle PXT. Since they both subtend, and this is a circle we actually can see, subtend, uh, arc, what was it, um, PT. Okay. That's a beautiful, beautiful result, I think. Because uh, what does that help us with? Well, look, if I have this angle and this angle the same in measure, right? These actually, okay? Now look, this is the same line here, right? For both angles, okay? You know what that will tell us? By the corresponding angles argument, right? This P X hmm, is perpen uh, is sorry is parallel to V W, right? So since uh, by the corresponding angles, right? V W T and P X T. V W V W T is that what I called it? T X uh, T X P X T angle P X T and V um, we had it here. What did I call it? Uh, T W V right here. T W V. So now we have since T S V equals angle T uh, v w from above and then equals to p x t the angles right by corresponding angles argument corresponding angles okay argument we have okay that lines v w and p x are parallel so we have p x and it's parallel to VW, okay? And I think some of you can already see that this is basically the final result that, look, VW is parallel to PX, VW is perpendicular to RS, hence PX will be perpendicular also to RS. And of course, there are probably other ways to show this. For instance, I'm sure some people would have done something like, oh, well, this arc is going to be the same as this arc in measure. Or maybe finding that this angle and that angle are the same, right? Or and they're the same as this one, right? And then that way, by symmetry, you can still have that, you know, Rx is of the same, you know, this is the same as that. And then so that way, by symmetry, this would be, you know, like, like maybe this is, these triangles are congruent. And so, P and whatever this is, this is actually uh, a midpoint of PX, a lot of different possibilities, but I really like the one we just did, okay? And so I'm pretty proud of that, and so I'm going to say that PX is the one that is perpendicular to the RS. So, PX is also, also, like VW, right? Per indicular to okay to the diameter Rx. Okay, and so that's the that's that's it. Okay, PX is that construction that what you needed. All right, I'm really happy to have been able to solve this with us. Okay. It's not, it could have been kind of something where we got to get stuck or whatnot. 
I'm like, so I'm happy we did it, and I hope you enjoy the solution. And um, I look forward to working with you next time. Have a great day.